Hello again, Michael Friedberg here from beautiful North Carolina. And before we start today's shaving soap review, I just wanted to bid a, a fond farewell and say thank you so much to Queen Charlotte Soaps. Unfortunately, they are closing their doors. Matthew and his mom have been in business for six years, providing some fantastic um, artisan shaving soaps and shaving creams, as well as bath soaps. I've been a big fan of their bath soaps and I've been a very big supporter of their shaving soaps and creams as well. Sorry to see them close their doors, but just wanted to say, a big thank you for what you've done and thank you for the products that you were able to release and uh, wish you all the best in the in the years to come and hopefully and maybe at some point maybe we'll see your products back on the market again so thank you once again queen charlotte soaps all the best well today's shaving soap was provided once again for review it is the violetta di parma this is from the saponificio bignoli another italian uh, shave soap uh, as you can see, beautiful white color to it. A lovely, sweet scent of violet. It just it is not an overpowering floral scent at all. It's just a nice, well balanced, sweet floral scent to it. Um, I really like what they've done with the uh, with the cap here. It's been uh, obviously you know been pressed out into this very cool shape. It's Sapore da Barba in Crema. It is a cream and not a soft soap, or it's marketed as a cream, not really as a soft soap or crope or as a hard soap at all. And as you can see here, it says Artigianale dal 1990, or it's 1945, from 1945. So an old, certainly a, you know, a bit of a history behind this soap maker. I've never tried these before. Um, I've been using it all week. I have a piece of it pulled out into the terracotta dish. This should be plenty. Today's brush is going to be the V-Long horsehair. You know, when I got this, I thought somehow the knot was going to be bigger and uh, it's a little small in the end, actually. So I will have to very likely for the third pass, go back and reload a little bit. Not a problem, just something to note. Today's razor is going to be the third slant in a row. Today is going to be the maggard slant on the MR5 handle. I've switched blades out. I was using a Gillette Silver Blue. Today it is going to be a Persona Red. I'm 100% sure that this is the third, maybe the fourth, possibly the second shave on this blade. No, I'm 100% sure it's the third, the third shave on this blade. Probably. So I know that for some of you, uh, that probably drives you crazy that I don't know exactly how many shaves I've had in the blade, but for some of the some of the shaves. I just go through the week and I don't really keep track. I just use the blade until I feel like it's just not working any longer. Sometimes I, I do make a note of it because I know, for example, that I would have started with a new blade on Sunday and so it's easy to keep track. But often I just don't. So for those of you that do, good on you. I just very often do not. So apologies if that's driving you crazy. I'm really sorry. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start loading the brush. It is damp but not soaking wet. This soap does lather up uh, very easily, loads very easily. Scent, scent strength is good. It's not strong or overpowering. Um, it is not really intensely floral. As I said, it's it's a nice, well-defined light scent with sort of a, a touch of sweetness to it. Um, and if you like violet, you're gonna like this quite a bit. I, I, I really enjoyed using it. It is a coconut oil-based soap. Um, it does have glycerin listed as one of the specific ingredients and bran oil. All right, as you can see, that's loading pretty easily. Let me go ahead and just load a little more. Yeah, the brush is small, so very likely in the third pass, we'll just have to come back and load a little bit more. But and I'll show you before, we, before we're done just how soft it is in the container. I let my face again a little bit. Ah, two and a half days of growth. Yeah, there's definitely something up with my beard hair too. It is, it is noticeably I just feel like it's kind of rougher and uh, I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's age, maybe it's the amount of gray hair. I don't know, but it certainly feels different somehow. A little rougher and a little coarser maybe. I've had the horsehair brush soaking of course for five minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer in some 
some warm to hot water, not overly hot, obviously. These brushes really benefit from soaking because they get a lot softer. And this brush has a touch, a touch of scritch to it that every now and then you get like a little poke and it just reminds you. But generally speaking, breaking in nicely, nice and soft. I don't tend to make really vigorous circular motions because this brush does have a slight tendency to um, get twisted up in the middle, which is a not uncommon problem with horsehair brushes. Well, as you can see, nice, easy lather, and the soap is very slick. Just add a bit of water. Yeah, and you can feel right there, when you add that extra touch of water, you just know, beautiful, beautiful slick lather. As you can see, that took very little effort to build up. Mm. Bit of my mouth. Okay, let me show you just rinse my hands. Okay, the Maggard slant on the MR5 handle. There you go. Really liking this handle. Actually, you know, it's, it just fits really well in the hand. Those indentations for your fingers makes it very easy to hold and very easy to maneuver. First couple shades. This week with the Gillette Silver Blue, not as comfortable as I had hoped. I think that's in part because actually that blade may be a little bit too sharp for this razor, ironically. Persona Red is definitely more of a mid-range blade for me. Definitely not as sharp as the Gillette Silver Blues, but a better fit for this razor. Two and a half days of growth, and you can see that that is just removing it without any issues. Now, in terms of comfort or efficiency, this to me is a more efficient razor than the uh, Icon X3, but a touch less comfortable. And there's a reason for that. The head geometry obviously is a little bit different. So where this is a little bit less in terms of comfort, it's a little more efficient than the Icon. So that's a nice, a nice balance, be able to choose between the two. Yeah, and shaving down there, this head like the icon has no exposed end taps, which I am a big fan of. Razor just feels a little more toothy, like there's a bit more blade feel to this than there is for the icon. No issue with blade control or chatter. The blade is really, really held quite captive in there and really an easy, easy shave. I think I just caught my nose there again. All right, pass number one, done. Yeah, I've had just a few a few spots where because there is a bit more blade exposed, I've caught myself here, but that's just my being careless about the way I'm holding my nose. And then just one time way down here, just being rushing in the morning, and it was completely my fault and just started way too low where there was no lather and just sort of twanged it. So let's lather up for pass number two. Yep, first bit of lather that went flying. There we go. You can see how just beautiful creamy lather on the soap. Well, just yet again, another wonderful vegan option. 
another great Italian soap. Good on you, Italy. Mm. Yeah, it's a bummer about Queen Charlotte, but you know, real life and truth sometimes, and the soap business was, I guess for Matthew and his mom, always was a bit of a side business, and real life and truth, and it's uh, you know time to move on, they just can't, uh, can't sustain it, so it's a bummer to see him go. First artisan soap I ever used, it was kind of a revelation as to uh, how good it could be. Some of the soaps I've been using before that, you know, sort of very standard commercial options. Definitely very intrigued because I like to support North Carolina vendors where I can. And the soap was fantastic. Soap was really, really good. Um, there was a difference between the hard soap and the soft soap, and then I think the hard soap also contained lanolin. So that was just an easy way for people to distinguish which one they wanted to get. No other real difference between them. I think he may have also been the first to offer a very heavily mentholated soap, which was the Vostok. I think the first one I bought was a key lime, which was a fantastic scent. And then there was a, a limited release of a cherry, what I think called Hanami or Hamani, I don't remember exactly. But. It was also, I think at the same time, a limited release of a tangerine scented one that was fantastic. The scent was so authentic, just beautiful. Yeah, this soap is very, very slick. It's not a very dense, thick, an overly heavy lather at all, but wonderful glide, very easy to lather, really liking it. This blade's also really uh, sort of coming to its own now after a couple days of use. Much better fit than that silver blue, at least for me. Yeah, really liking this slant as well. Like I said, X3 may be a touch more comfortable, just a little less blade feel. But I think this one is a touch more efficient, actually. I'm just taking the hair off fantastically. Really easy, smooth, no friction shave. All right, I'm just gonna go back. Uh, even though there looks like there's quite a bit of lather, I'm just gonna continue to just load up a bit extra for the bowl. It's the last, last shave of the week with this product, so might as well go a little overboard. All right, just load up a little bit extra. There we go. Add a bit of water to the brush. There we go. Start off with a nice bit of wet. Now, because this is a bit of a prickly brush, and this is the third pass, it's just good to just pay attention and not overdo it on the face lathering piece. So you don't add to any possible skin irritation. Wow, beautiful, super smooth lather. Scent is, scent persists. Again, like I said, not overpowering. All right, let's pull some of that lather out of the brush. Yeah, look at that, beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, enough tomfoolery. Pass number three, against the grain. I've had some really interesting comments lately about you know people being nervous about that against the grain pass or having real trouble with it. And you know what? 
if you are a new wet shaver, there is no rule that requires you to do that. Take the time to get used to your equipment, learn how to make a good lather, learn what kind of blades work well for your face. If you don't want to do an against the grain pass right off the bat, that's fine. Do two across the grain passes. Change up the angle a little bit. If you're nervous, don't push it. You know, give yourself a chance to get used to what you're doing. You know, and the idea that somehow you're not really shaving unless you're doing against the grain pass is just ridiculous. Yes, it does help get a smooth shave, but there's no benefit to pushing it to try to get that shave if all you do is get irritation or nicks or cuts or you're just nervous and it just takes all the pleasure and enjoyment out of it. Don't do it yet. Yeah, this soap is very slick, makes buffing really easy. And this is one of the few spots where I can really tell the difference in the comfort level. Just on this bottom part right here. little bit of tugging or just just a bit of sort of friction there which I don't get with the X3 on the other hand man there's just <laughs> really taking it off And the soap, if you add a bit of water, if you like, if I were to sort of, you know, wet my face now, it's incredibly slick soap. Yeah, no friction there at all. Yeah, I know people are going to wonder, well, which of these two razors to buy if I'm interested in a slant. Well, you know, it's hard to say what's going to work best for you, but I guess if you are really concerned about the comfort, I would say go for the, uh, go for the icon. If you are interested in a little more efficiency or maybe a bit more toothiness to the razor, maybe you've got a sort of thicker, denser beard. Go for the maggards. I don't think you're going to be unhappy with either. Wow, yeah, that is really very slick. In fact, I'm going to do just a quick. This is going to do a quick test buff under here. Oh yeah. Yeah, wow, very, very slick. Try to get those hairs right there that really lay flat against the skin. Hardest ones of the bunch. All right, let's rinse off. This is one of those soaps, by the way, that is, uh, in the scheme of things, hard to rinse. But it just goes to show how much residual slickness there is. Wow, yeah, just phenomenally, phenomenally slick right now. You can feel this just a left behind layer. Very impressive. All right, let's do this. One more, one more. If you're wondering, there is in fact water going all over my shirt. I don't care. Well, well, yeah, that is a 
another fantastic shave. You know, I know that for some people they are a little bit, maybe not, I don't want to say mystified, but the distrustful of the slab because they're not quite clear how it can work because you need a certain angle at which the blade really can cut the hair. But the fact is that there are a lot of slats on the market. They do work very well for people. And I don't really believe that that is some kind of, a, you know, kind of a fake impression that people have, like a placebo effect of the razor. If it works really well for you and you can tell because of how it shaves your face, then go for that. If a, you know, a straight edge razor works for you, then fantastic. And in fact, both of those razor types work very well. These are very easy and pleasant used razors. So for me, uh, no reason for me to turn away from those slants at all. All right, today's aftershave, another light floral scent. This I believe is lilac with a touch of mint. Give us a gentle shake. It is the Mirsol Formula C. I believe this is the bottle. Yeah, for some reason inside the cap, this has happened one of the previous ones, that little sort of plasticky paper insert has this terrible habit of riding down into the thread. Not a disaster by any stretch, but sometimes when you're unscrewing it, it's just cap acts a bit weird. All right, let's start with a little bit and then add a little tingle. Definitely alcohol in this aftershave, so that's not always a surprise by any stretch. Mm, now that scent goes very well with the soap. Light touch of mint. Oh God, this stuff smells fantastic. Feels really good going on. Cooling. In fact, I am gonna put on more. Well, just a touch. Warm it up. Oh, wow. <sighs> what do you say to that? You know, this completely makes up for not shaving on Saturdays because normally I do shave every day and so not shaving on Saturdays, well, you know, it has its upside, which is that you get maybe an even better shave on Sunday. All right, well, huh. let that cool off and dry off a little bit. Oh God, there's just, oh, what a wonderful scent. Okay, let's go and recap and let's start off with today's shave soap. I'm gonna show you this again. Uh, in the container very very soft uh, as you can see and it's it's just uh it is cream like for sure this is the violetta violetta di parma von sapone piccio bignoli from italy very very nice shaving soap again coconut oil based vegan soap um i do really like the work that they've done on the uh on the on the cap really well really well present really well presented um yeah, I really enjoyed that shaving soap. It is easy to use, easy to lather. The scent is really pleasant. Uh, not an overpowering floral scent, but a very clear, very distinct floral scent. Very, very slick when wet. So I would recommend if you're using this, make sure that you're adding enough water to the lather to make sure that you're getting the slickness that you should be getting out of the soap. And you'll know because the brush will be moving on your face and you'll feel really no resistance, no friction when you're lathering it up. As you start to shave, you'll know right away, okay, that's spot on. The brush for today, the Via Long Horsehair Brush. Uh, I should have gotten a bigger knot, but I didn't, so I'm gonna continue to use this one. It does work very well. I just wish it had just a bit more, a bit more capacity. Occasionally a little bit scritchy, but not bad at all, and just works fantastic with these painterly motions. Oh, looks like I, looks like I did nick myself there at the bottom there. See, overshaved again. It happens. Okay, today's razor is the Maggard slant on the MR5 handle with a Persona red blade. And to close it off, it is the Mirsol, the Formula C. Well, that's that everybody, done. Just wanna say uh, thank you all again so much for watching. If you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave those against the video. I try to get back to those as quick as I can. Um, I do try to answer every comment if possible. Uh, thank you again so much for watching and until next time, Goodbye.